Good afternoon and welcome to Riviera Apostolic Church once again. We are honored to have you with us today. If you will please notice on the screen behind me, you will see our web address where you can access the special events for our church, the different ministries, the life skill classes. And we also offer all of our sermons on the YouTube channel, Riviera Apostolic Church. If you would like to participate in a Bible study, please contact us through our website or call us on our phone here at the church. That number is 361-296-3181 and we will be happy to schedule you for a Bible study and as a matter of fact, we will be elated to schedule you for a Bible study. That's the business that we're in. Helping souls find Jesus. They are free and you will be encouraged and you will be blessed, I promise you. We would also like to, in, to invite you to join us here at the church. Every Sunday afternoon at 2.30 for worship service. And every Wednesday evening at 7.30 for Bible studies. And with that, I would like to draw your attention to Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 through 35. And while you are turning there, I will just say that we had a wonderful time with our outreach last week. If you missed Friday, Saturday, and Sunday here at the church. You missed some great services, and you missed yes. on Saturday from 2 to 4 some absolutely spectacular brisket <laughs> and barbecued pork. It was some of the best food that I've ever had, if I must say so myself. Though I did not cook it. But it was amazing. If you have Matthew 5 and 33 through 35, let me begin to read. It says, again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And so today I want to talk to you for a few minutes on the subject. All I can tell you as if we are closer today than we were yesterday. Lord, I am asking you, my God, to anoint my words as I carry you to the congregation. Lord, let revelation, let the Holy Spirit fall upon those that are listening to the sound of my voice. Lord, that they may have a closer and deeper relationship with you and that they may be ready on that great and terrible day when you come back, Lord, to hear you say, well done. In the name of Jesus, you may be seated and I appreciate you standing out of respect for the word of God. Today I must confess to you that I cannot tell you if Jesus is coming today, if he's coming tomorrow, perhaps next week, or next month, or next year, or even if I shall live to see the return of Jesus Christ. I can't tell you. Right. Jesus has not met with me during my times of meditation and prayer. 
and told me the precise time of his return. I know many of you are surprised, but that hasn't happened yet. As a matter of fact, I can tell you that he said in Matthew 25 and 13, Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So, my friends, I can say with all certainty that if someone tells you they know when Jesus Christ is going to return, they are undoubtedly a liar. They are a false prophet, and you should not be led by blind men. Or you will most assuredly fall into the ditch in which they are inevitably headed. Because the Bible tells us if the blind lead the blind, they will both fall into the ditch together. I can, however, tell you this afternoon that God has given us clues in His Word that tell us when the end time is near. Mm -hmm. And so today, I'm going to go through a few of those clues. And a lot of my message today will be straight from the pages of God's Word. Starting in Luke 21 and 8 through 32. And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. Don't right. be afraid of that. For right. these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in many places and there will be hunger and famines there will be pestilences and pandemics and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven Never before in the history of this world has there been more earthquakes, has there been more hunger and famine and persecution and pestilence, has there been more wars and rumors of wars and people fighting each other and hating each other. He said, but before all of these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you delivering you up to the synagogues and unto prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. There are more martyrs in today's time in foreign countries and around the world than there has ever been in the history of mankind. Much to my surprise, I did not realize this until recently. Christians are being persecuted and killed the world over. They said, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. Don't give a whole lot of thought to the answer, because if you start thinking about your answer, you may try to be politically correct. You may try to save yourself from persecution. But you see, in the Bible, they counted themselves blessed. They counted themselves to be special if they were persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. He said, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends. And some of you they shall put to death. And you shall be hated for my name's sake by all men, but there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. 
And when you shall see Jerusalem encompassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. And let them that are in countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun, and signs in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations. There has never been a time when all of the nations have been so distressed. We hear rumors of wars about Russia and us, China and us. North Korea and everyone, Jerusalem and the Middle East, everywhere you turn, somebody screaming about a war that's fixing to happen. And if you listen to some, they are screaming that it's fixing to be a third world war. But the Bible says, don't be afraid. You see, if you have Jesus on your side, mm -hmm. What is there to be afraid of? That's right. That's right. I can truly say to you today Jesus. that if I go to sleep and I sleep that eternal sleep and I wake up and see the face of my master, what could be better? You see, when I'm asleep, I'm not worried about what you're doing. I'm not worried about what they're doing. I'm not worried about my bills or my chores that I have to do. I'm not worried about so-and-so not liking me or so-and-so not thinking I'm quite good enough. None of that matters when I'm sleeping. So to sleep that eternal sleep and wake up to see my master would be the greatest blessing that I could think of as a Christian. The seas and the waves shall be roaring. Signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. They said just a few weeks ago that the hurricane that hit Acapulco, Mexico, was a Category 5. They said that it absolutely went overnight from a tropical storm to a Category 5, and it was the first time in record that that had happened. Hurricanes are worse. Storms are worse. Everybody's screaming about global warming and this and that and red tides and earthquakes and forest fires and brush fires and all these different things of nature. But you see, the Bible forewarned us that this would be happening. Right. It also said that men's hearts would be failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spake unto them a parable about the fig tree and all the trees. And he said, when they, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is nigh at hand. So likewise, ye, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. And verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. 
That sounds like the times in which we live. Yes. Prophecies from the Bible are being fulfilled daily. Yes. Not one last year and one next year. Every day you hear of something that is happening that is fulfilling prophecy of the Bible. Yes. Each day when I listen to the news and the world events, I hear of wars and rumors of wars. I hear of natural disasters happening throughout the world that have no precedent as to the extremity and the frequency with which they are happening. I see more hatred. I see more violence. I see more crime and more godlessness. And I see more people turning away from the biblical principles set forth in God's word. I see a world that no longer can clearly define the lines between right and wrong. Correct. Between truth and lies. Between wisdom and ignorance. Romans 1, 21 and 32 or 21 through 32 said because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened professing themselves to be wise they became fools I heard a story on the news last week where a transgender woman stood before the press and told them that transgender men could have babies but regular men couldn't. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. What a fool. It goes on to say, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Idolatry became the norm. They began to worship idols. They began to worship them more than they worshiped God. And let me tell you something, when idolatry begins to creep into the hearts and into the minds of people and organizations, that which follows will be an unnatural and lustful sin of the flesh. That is why churches that worship so-called statues and saints or anything but Jesus Christ are plagued with sexual sins such as homosexuality and pedophilia. When you see time after time after time the abuse of children by the hierarchy of an, of an organization, you can rest assured that it has become a den of idolatry because the Bible says so right here. No saint can help you from the grave. Mary cannot intercede for you to Jesus and save your soul from hell. Only Jesus Christ can save you because he said in his word, there is only one name under heaven given among men by which we can be saved. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus is coming soon and we need to get ready. It goes on to say, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affection for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly. And in the original language that comes to, in, that is defined as indecent. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was to meet. And that word is to bind or to be put in bonds. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And that word right there is rejected, cast away, or worthless. To do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, 
maliceness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, implacable and unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Even though they know that the Bible and God's word said, if you do this, you're going to be put to death. You're going to be judged for it. But even then, the Bible says, not only do they do these things, but they have pleasure in them that do them. Right. Today is the day when evil is celebrated in this world. Today is the day when people are embracing sin and perversion like never before. It has been said that for evil to succeed, good men only need to do nothing. Just to stand by and let it happen. And today, that's what we see happening. I have been stunned by the images of people looting and rioting in cities around our nation. As law enforcement stands on the corner or on the sidewalks and watches them do it and do nothing to stop it. I have been saddened to see people that ravage and pollute our cities and our streets as our government tied the hands of the people and um, did not allow them to enforce common sense and basic law. I have been horrified as men have begun to compete in women's sports and use women's restrooms and exploit the sanctity of our wives and our daughters' privacy. The world has come to a point for they know not the truth. I have been angered as public schools have become a, poor, a forum for pornography and sexual innuendo disguised as sex education through the classrooms and the libraries of even our elementary schools. Right. We are in a world that has lost its way and destruction is coming because Jesus is returning to this earth soon. I stood in a department store only the day before yesterday and talked to a man. And I told him as he told me this world is going crazy. I said, but Jesus is coming soon. And the man looked down and just kind of smirked. And he said something else. I said, but I'm telling you now that Jesus is coming soon. But he would not stop. He would not accept that. And I walked away thinking, Lord... What is it going to take for us to wake up? Right. When we can see what's going on around us, but we still sleep and we still slumber. You see, the problem is that people no longer believe that Jesus Christ is going to return to this earth someday. It has been so long that people have begun to be deceived into the perception that the Bible is just a myth. And that Jesus was just a character in a storybook. But time and time and time again, even in recent history, even as recently as weeks and months, there have been discoveries in archaeology and science that have proven the authenticity and the accuracy of the Bible. Sure, scientists will try to explain away the facts, and they will try to muddy the waters. But even the world of science knows that they are treading in waters that run too swift and are way too deep for them to explain what they are seeing. One renowned scientist put it like this, and I paraphrase. He said, we cannot let God get a foot in the door of science because if he does, he will destroy everything that we have built. Today, as we watch the world turn against the nation of Israel, having been brutally attacked by vicious thugs and criminals. Mm -hmm. We have to ask ourselves the question, how far will this anti-Semitism go that we are seeing rise in the world around us? How many people in this world and of this generation will turn against God's people? We see on the news each and every day how more and more people are demonstrating and showing their hatred for the Jewish nation and the Jewish people. 
We see more and more nations and more and more countries that are joining in and speaking out against the actions of the nation of Israel as it defends its nation. We see more and more countries and nations that are beginning to back Israel's enemies with weapons and money and the necessary supplies to destroy God's city, the great city of Jerusalem. But mark my words. I cannot tell you today when God shall return, but I can tell you today that when all nations rise against Israel, as it is spoken of in the Bible, and it seems that all hope is lost, and that Israel will be overwhelmed, that will be the day when God will step forth and put an end to all of this nonsense. Right. That will be the day when God will step forth and say it is time to render judgment. It is time to prove that my word is forever settled in heaven and that it shall never pass away. And in that great and glorious and wonderful day, I shall see my master. I shall see my king and I shall inherit a robe and a crown oh, and all of the toils of this life oh, will then be over with. Oh, what a day. Yes. What a day when my Jesus I shall see. Yes. When I look upon the face of the one that saved me by his grace, what a glorious day that will be. In Zechariah chapter 14, verses 1 through 9, it said, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof, toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half the mountains shall remove toward the north, and half of the mountains shall remove toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Ye, yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints, and it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord. Not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem. Half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In the summer and in the winter it shall be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. That day is coming when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And all of this nonsense with these parades that go on and all of these, these pride things and all of these satanic things that happen, all of that nonsense will be put and I can't wait to see the day when they will bow their knee and say, You are the King of Kings. Yes. And you are the Lord of Lords. You are Jesus Christ, the Creator of heaven and earth. No, friend, I can't tell you the day, nor the hour. I can just tell you that everything that is happening in this world right now, today, points towards the culmination of the events spoken of in the Bible. That's right that tells us that the end of days is nigh. That we are living as it were in the days of Noah. When no one believed what Noah said, he kept on working. They had never seen rain. The Bible says they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. They were partying. They were making fun of Noah. They were laughing. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Satan has rocked this world to sleep. 
And they are in a slumber from which they cannot awaken. But there are a few that travel the path less traveled, that have found the way that is narrow and leadeth unto life. I do believe that events such as have taken place in the world recently and taken the entire world and the nation of Israel by complete surprise will mark the beginning of the last days. But I cannot tell you for sure that this is that event. These events have sparked a war between good and evil. They spark the controversy that rings out around the entire globe. Hatred has sprung forth at an alarming rate. And right in the smack dab middle of the center of the controversy is the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. And my Bible tells me that such an event will mark the beginning of the end for time and for life and for mankind as we know it. I can't tell you that this is that event, but I can say for certain that it will be one like this event and this could be that very one. I can say that. No, I can't tell you when Jesus Christ is coming back. I cannot tell you when that trumpet will sound. I cannot tell you when he will stand on that mount and it will divide asunder and come to the victorious rescue of his people. But I can tell you today that we are closer today than we were yesterday. And we have no guarantee of tomorrow. Today, the Bible said, is the day of salvation. Today is the day to turn your life around and to make yourself ready for that great day of judgment. This is the time. For as sure as you can hear my voice, it will happen and it will be soon. There's no turning around for me. There's too many sunsets that set behind that mountain. There's too many miles that I've gone that are behind me. And the path in front of me is for sure, most assuredly shorter than the one that is behind me. I've got way too much to gain, to lose at this point in time. You see, the race isn't to the swift. The race isn't to the strong or the beautiful or the smart. The Bible says it's to those that endure to the end. And today, I am closer than I was yesterday. I was saddened just this week. Or, yeah, it was. I think it was last week. I was saddened. I made connections with some people that I knew. And there was a man that was a friend of mine, and I had contacted him and asked him to come to church. And he turned me down and did not come to church. And I did not hear from him for a while. And I heard just last week that right after that had happened, he began feeling ill. And he walked to our fire station and told him something was wrong with him. And then he collapsed and he died. You never know when your time is going to end. That's true. You never know when God is going to give you the last call. If you find yourself today despairing at the events that are taking place in this world, if you find yourself today in a state of fear as to whether or not you're truly ready for Jesus' return, if you find yourself today not sure which direction to take and which path to follow, if you're not sure how to get to where you need to get to go to where you want to go, I ask you today to contact us. And we'll give you a Bible study. We will show you the biblical way to get to heaven. We will show you what it takes and together we will make it. No matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, and no matter how you're feeling, we are all closer today than we were yesterday. 
I invite you today to let God take control of your life. This world is lost. This world has gone in a direction that says we are coming to the end of days. God bless you today. I hope and pray that you have been blessed and that revelation has been imparted into your life concerning the times in which we live. And I pray that a burning desire has been sparked within your soul to find God and to dwell in His presence in a state of assured peace and readiness for such times as this. Please come join us for service and for Bible studies. And let's be ready for we are all just a little bit closer today than we were yesterday. Lord Jesus, I have delivered what you have given me today. God, let it spark something in the hearts and souls of men. Lord, that they may be ready for your coming. That they may be prepared for the end times in which we live. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.